gentlemen, welcome to the Guns in Radio podcast. And now, give it up for your host, Chris Caputo and Dustin Bones. Ah, it's the Guns of Radio podcast coming to you twice. Yeah, we're coming to you on a Thursday because uh, this is a bonus show, episode number 111. Uh, this is our thank you for getting us to that, uh, basically smashing one of our bonus show goals. You guys, we asked you to get us to 50 followers on our TikTok. You guys smashed the fucking shit out of that. Now we're like, what, over 200? I haven't checked in a while. Yeah, we're over 200 now. We're hoping oh. to get to 1,000. Yeah, one of these days. That's probably that should be another bonus show going maybe we'll make later on. Mm-hmm. Once we're closer to there, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely one to keep in the future. Um but yeah, once again guys, thank you for getting um to that goal. And this is the bonus show that you guys voted on. Uh it took a while to actually get to the song because in the original poll <laughs> we made there was a, a literal three way tie. Usually we get a tie between two of them, but we got a three way tie between three of the songs. So literally I had to put up one I don't know if you'll see on our Twitter at Guns and Radio Pod. I had to put up one. It's like, here we go. We got six hours for this because we got to record this <laughs> shit tonight. We're recording yeah. this like about a week in advance. So I'm like, listen, we need a fucking winner right now. I'll give you six hours. Boom. Done. And uh, the winner, the wall song that came out, Beggars and Hangers On from Slash of Snake Hood. So that's what we're going to listen to. We're going to listen to uh, Beggars and Hangers On in just a little bit. And uh, actually, we're going to watch. This one has a music video. Oh, yeah. So... We're going to watch the music video. If you want to watch along with us, link is in the description. And, uh, but first, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to have a little fun tonight Ooh. with you. It's a bonus show. I mean, we're here on an extra episode, and we was like, what can we do to have fun with you guys? Mm-hmm. So we're going to play, we're going to do some trivia. Mm-hmm. And uh, see if you guys out there can beat Caputo. All Probably right. could. I feel miserably at these games. Somehow, one way or another, <laughs> what, whatever Dustin throws at me, I end up... A couple of them actually did okay in, but out of that, you, I just fail hard. You did okay in the, 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 the drums game last time, didn't you, when we played the drums game? No, like, Matt fucking destroyed me in the drums game. The first time we did the drums game, yeah, I, that was it. And then it was just yeah, a slow, downhill that. slope from there. <laughs> I swear I thought you won the last one we did. Uh, no, the last um, one we did was Matt Manzella. He fucking... Oh, yeah. You put me against the musician. He's I'm fucked. <laughs> Listen, I, yeah, I do music, but that guy does it for a living. Me is just, like, something else. Yeah, it really wasn't that very much of a fair thing, especially since he was working on drums that week. Anyway. I, was gonna say, I don't play the music. I just criticize the people that play it. So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a music commentator, not a musician. As much we as I we, want to be both. <laughs> we can't do, those who can't do criticize, right? Isn't that what they used to say? Exactly. We will, we've will. we talked a lot of shit over 111 episodes, so I mean, <laughs> and we're still here. Talking Thanks shit. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> Louder than ever. Um, Loud and proud, baby. Well, the, the quiz that I'm using is off of KIDADL.com. And Kedaddle? this is kid, 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 Kidali, kid, Kidaddle. I don't is it know. K I D A. K I D A D L. K I D A D L. Kidaddle. I'm just gonna call it Kidaddle, like Skidaddle. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is awesome rock and roll trivia for budding musicians. So Caputo, you want to be a musician? So yes. so so we're gonna we're gonna give you this trivia, and hopefully this will help you out because it says it's for budding musicians. All, all right? right. So all you out there listening, uh, play along with if you know the answer. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, if you budding musicians, all right. All right. First question. You ready? Here we go. It's a history right. question. When did rock and roll originate? Is like is like we're talking like a specific year or a time frame? Um, I don't know. You give me 
here. I tell you what. There's there's a, there's a time frame in the answer. You give me an, a year, and if it's in that time frame, I'll, I'll I'll count it as a win. Okay, I'm gonna go 1955. That's that's in the time frame. Awesome. The answer is the 1940s and the 1950s. So, all right. So, you see there's Caputo okay. got one point. Now, you out there. Uh, how many points? You guys keep up with your own points because I can't hear you screaming into your phone. So, <laughs> Not yet, at least. Maybe the technology is still not there yet. I mean, you can leave us a voicemail. Oh, yeah. It's in the link in the our... description of, our, of the episode here, wherever you're listening to this. That's right. So... I mean, eh? <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of works, I guess. Unless someone does like a live reaction of our podcast. <laughs> X reacts to Guns and Radio. Please, I'm down for that. <laughs> and then they record the whole thing on our voicemail. That's fine with me. Because then what we'll do is we'll edit it all together and we'll take the fucking week off. <laughs> <laughs> works for me too, brother. <laughs> All right, question number two. Rock and roll was born from white musicians covering songs by black singers of which music genre? Hmm, fuck, that's, that's tough. Well, it wasn't rock before. I guess it would be more like probably blues, I want to say. It's yeah, it's rhythm and blues is the ah, cool answer, but I think that's. I, think I was going to say like R and B or blues. I guess they're both the same, anyway. I would, yeah, I would, I would give you the point anyway. Okay, question number three. Now this one is a year. This one is a specific year. What year? When was the term that rock and roll? The word or when was the year that the term rock and roll was coined? I'm going to say it's probably around the 50s. I want to say maybe 1957. Uh, no, man. One. Sorry. That would actually be 1951. Ah, oh, fuck. Is the right answer. It was that early? Fuck. I. Damn. And here's one also, guys. Listening at home, see if you know this one. Who coined the term rock and roll? Hmm. No hints. Do you guys at home know? Hmm. I, I, hmm. It's interesting. Who coined? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hint. He was a radio DJ. Who was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as he should be, since he came up with the Who, Wolfman Jack? Uh, no. Hey, Wolfman Jack on the radio. The answer is Alan Freed. Oh, god and, damn it. Uh he was inducted in nineteen eighty six. According to Wikipedia, it says Freed was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 91. Uh, he became internationally known for promoting African-American rhythm and blues music mm -hmm. on the radio in the United States and in Europe under the name Rock and Roll. Okay. Ah, all right. However, Alan Freed, yeah. That name is familiar now that you mention it. Um... Uh, he was his career was destroyed in the '60s, however, by a payola scandal. Ah, uh, good old payola. Basically, means uh, certain artists were paying him to play their music. Yeah, that was a Which big thing in radio back then. Isn't that big of a fucking deal? Not in this day and age. Shit, that's the only way to get over nowadays. Payola won in the fucking long term because that's. Common practice now. They are, dude. It's all about payola now. All right. What genres influenced the rock and roll genre? Well, I think we already mentioned, you know, rhythm and blues. There's six listed here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we'll say rhythm and blues, but you got it. You're gonna have to give me at least. I'm gonna say you have to give me at least one more. One more, okay. So yeah, for Up sure. Six the um, the five list. Influence there. Influence. I'm gonna, it's got blues and rhythm and blues listed to get as that's two separate things. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna say there's three more. All right. What um, other genre could have influenced rock and roll? I'll give you an easy one right now, especially you guys listening at home. What genre of music influenced all genres of music? I don't know, classical? Of all time. Mm -mm. How did all music get started? What were we doing when we started making music as cavemen? I don't know, just hitting shit. <laughs> We were honoring the gods. Oh, fucking gospel right? vocal choir right there. Gospel, man. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to give it to you. but Because that's a hard one. But yeah. the answer, and see if you guys at home got this one, it's blues, gospel, jazz, R&B, and uh, country. Oh, goddamn, jazz. I should have. Oh, man. Country, I guess, I in a way. Get jazz. Yeah, jazz should have, but country I think was more later on. I guess influenced it. They both influenced each other in some uh, ways. I would say they both influenced each other because jazz changes like drastically. Mm -hmm. Older jazz and new jazz. Yeah. Who is known as the father of rock and roll? <laughs> Father, well, Elvis was the king. I don't know if he'd be like the godfather. Hmm. Or like, you know, I the. I wouldn't say it's Elvis. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't going to say Elvis. You know, he's the king of rock. J James Brown was the godfather of soul. Um, I'm trying to think. Chuck Berry. Yes, you got it. Fucking Johnny Be Good, baby. Ch Chuck Berry. All right. Who is known as the king of rock and roll? Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just switched up. That's there. an easy one. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Here's a good one. Now, this one is uh, this is a bit of a hard one, but let me tell you. Let me. I'm gonna ask it, and let's see if you guys at home know which rock and roll star is known as the innovator, the originator. And the architect of rock and roll. Innovator. Damn. The innovator, the originator, and the architect of rock and roll. Well, if Chuck Berry's the father, someone has, else has to be there. Um, Little Richard? Yes. Good God. Good God in the small world. Little Richard, man. I think that I think he was like addicted to like hookers and shit. <laughs> and then he, oh yeah. He left rock, became born again, and he's like, screw Little, this shit. Little Richard was gay before it was okay to be gay. Long before it was okay to be gay. Remember this little song "Tutti Fruity? It's probably what it, I think that's what it's about. Um, what did they call African American artists? Who appealed to white audiences during the early days of rock and roll? Damn. Hmm. And it's nothing racist, by the way. Okay. Or I wouldn't ask the question. So any uh, anybody out there hoping we're going to say some dirty words here, you're, uh, it's never going to happen on this show. I promise no, you that. You'll have to wait till the one in a million episode. <laughs> and even then. We'll have to censor everything. I don't know what we'll, how we'll handle that, but you won't hear it come out of my mouth. So. Yeah, well, you can find like a clean version or something, maybe. Yeah. Or something like that. But hmm, what do they call them? I don't know. Um, segregational artists? I don't know. I'm just trying to think. I would say no, and I, I get the this because I, I feel like this term is around because of segregation because white mm -hmm. people and black people used to be highly separated mm -hmm. um, so when a black person would come along they'd record some music and white people was like huh i really like that black person's music that was called a crossover artist 
Oh, really? Yes, I did not know that. And now it has a totally different meaning nowadays, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's like, that would be like if somebody from a country genre makes like a rock album or a rap album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would yeah. think in this day and age. Yeah, something like that. You're just crossing into a different genre, pretty much. That's how I would see crossover as. What are the three main instruments of a rock and roll band? Drums, guitar, and vocals? Like this, or a bass? Mm. I don't know, man. You said vocals first. I can't. I don't know if that one's count. We'll we'll give it to you anyway. We got drums, <laughs> right. guitar, and bass. Well, I don't know if bass would have been covered in guitar as well because they're both like us different or. I would probably... Well, it says electric guitar. Mm hmm Well, any guitar. Yeah. 6, 8, 12 string. Uh, let's see. What was the first rock and roll song ever to become world famous? Mm hmm Hmm. Um, it's a Chuck Berry song. I'm trying to think. It has to be Chuck Berry. I want to say Johnny Be Good. Uh, no, Rock Around the Clock by oh, God damn it. Uh, Bill Haley and the Comets. Oh, wait, is this the same dudes Rock that did the. Uh... <laughs> is it the same dudes that did that Teenage Love song? From... I don't oh, that's know. a different band. How does that sound familiar? But yeah, this is... Uh... What was the early... In early rock and roll music, what was considered the lead instrument? Hmm. The, the guitar still? Um... Uh, hmm. Well, judging just by like, the sample of listening to that song, it, it, I think it was more like, I guess, the drums? Oh, fuck, I don't know. That would, they would have considered piano or saxophone. Damn, okay. All right, we're getting into some rock stars here. All, All right. right, we got a few questions. Uh, and uh, then we'll get on to our song of the day. Uh, let me skip ahead a few songs here. Uh, ooh, here we go. How many top 40 songs did Elvis Presley have? Oh, fuck. It was probably quite a few. I want to say probably 12? 10 to 12? 10 to 12? Yeah. What do you guys at home think? What's your answer? I'm going to give you the, the audience at home a minute to think about it, too. All right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, at least 10 to 12. Because uh, maybe I could be wrong, but I'm just going to go with that one. Well, if there was ever any doubt who is the king of fucking rock and roll, Elvis Presley had 100 top 40 songs. Oh, jeez. Yeah, then I think about it, it was like top 40. I, I was thinking more like top 10. Okay, how many number one songs did Elvis have? Uh, I'd say half of those are probably number one, at least. Uh, Maybe not less. Not quite that many. Maybe less. Probably, it'll be under 20, I think. I'll tell you what, you get in within three, I'll give you the, I'll give you the point. You guys listening at home, what do you think, also? I'm going to say 15 to 20. I'd, I'd give you that point. Uh, All right. I, I honestly quit keeping up with points a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the answer's 18. Ah, there you go. Because, like, I can't have that many. Cause, I mean, like, so many other artists have beaten that since. And, like, Michael Jackson oh, yeah. alone has beaten that. Like, double that, probably. Oh, man. How many Little Richard songs did Elvis Presley cover? Shit, probably at least 10. More, maybe. Uh, 
I'm going to give you guys at home a minute to think about it, too. I'm trying to go slow so people can play along at home and have time to think also. Yeah. Something I always did have a lot of his own original shit, but I don't remember him covering. Oh, he covered a lot of black people's music. Yeah. Um, and people give him hate for that, but he fucking paid everybody for it, so I don't see why the fuck he gets so much hate. Exactly. When it comes to Little hate. Richard... When it comes to Little Richard... He uh, covered four. Four, okay. That was a little off. That's a ten. All covered right. an entire album. He said, this is mine, bitch. <laughs> no, I, he never did that. Um, let's see. Let's scroll down. Let's do... Uh, do one more here. Do, 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 do. Trying to find a good one to go out on. All right, here we go. Which genre of music were the bands Led Zeppelin and the Beatles most influenced by? Hmm. I don't know. Well, Led Zeppelin for sure. I mean, if you include Satanism as a genre, then yeah, they were definitely influenced <laughs> by that. Um, hmm. Because Zeppelin was all over the place. Um, hmm. A specific genre? Probably not. I want to blues possibly but that's tough that's, that's tough damn I'm gonna need an answer Caputo cause I did I found one more I'm trying to think like what would their stuff sound like though I'm just gonna tell you it's blues I was gonna I was, I was actually gonna lean towards blues I'm like it has to be dude all right, I'm going to play you a song here. Just a little clip from a... Uh, and the reason I picked this one is because this is a good... This is a hard question, okay? Because this is a very... Obs uh, what's the word? I'm Not obsolete, but obscure. Yeah. Yeah, obscure that's probably song. the uh, What year... Hey, where's my phone? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to grab that. Make sure it's not broke. Uh, I dropped this thing too many times. It's fine. <laughs> It's fucking pockets, bro. Like, they don't make, you know, like, fucking, like, perpendicular pockets. They're all, like, on a fucking angle. <laughs> I know, like, right? I about pants nowadays. Sorry, I'm going on a little pants rant right now. But, like, <laughs> fucking make them perpendicular, like, two to fucking I four. Know, right? Like, jeans, bro. Okay, so I'm going to play you a song. Like I said, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, obscure. So you probably haven't ever heard this before. But... <laughs> I'm going to need to know the artist mm -hmm. and the year it was released, and I'll give you bonus points if you can give me the exact date. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the Bomba, baby. Richie Valens. It's probably sometime <laughs> in the 50s. Actually, it's more 60s. Um, 61. Going with 61. Yeah. You want to go for the bonus points and give me the exact date? No, I don't know that. I give you the name of the artist. The song uh, is Richie Val Valens. Originally Richie Valens, I think um, Los Lobos or some other Spanish guys covered it, did it? But it was Richie Valens originally. But it was released October 18th, 1958. Ah, I was gonna say 58. I'm gonna say 61 just in case. The one gag on the show that never dies. <laughs> that besides Vince Neil calling me. It's because it's so ridiculous, man. Oh, man. Well, uh, we've stalled long enough. Uh, you wanna You wanna watch our music video? Yeah, let me pull this one up. Hang on. Where the fuck was it? I had it somewhere here. Hang on. 
Do, do. Uh, you want me to send it to you on Facebook? No, I'll look up on YouTube quick right now. Hang on, let's, we'll let um, our, our listeners here get uh, get prepared as well. You can look in the link in the description of the video. And uh, you can watch this great music videos with us. It was like a, it's a five minute video, right? Or something? Or... 4.39. I was finding one that's like five minutes, 15 seconds. I mean, I think this is a, this is a legit video, so. Music video. Let me... ah. Yeah, because it gives me random ones. I think this is the one. Oh, this one's 4.38. Okay, I think I found the one. The black one. and white one? Yeah, the other one was another one in black and white, too. It was 5 minutes 17. Music video. Yeah. Now I know what you're thinking. Shouldn't we have done this before the show? <laughs> yeah, we should have, but we fucking didn't. Yeah, well, you know what? Fuck you, that's what we say. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I believe I believe this is a legit music video. It looks like it was taped off of MTV, because it's got MTV logos on it. Mm -hmm. And then uploaded to YouTube, so. You ready? You ready to I'm, do this? I'm ready. Um, you want me to count them down, or I can count them down? You count them down. All right, ladies and gents, beggars and hangers on. In three, two, one, play. This is the still the slash smoke cigarettes era. Yeah, it was mid ninety five I think when this album came out, or ninety four. Five o'clock somewhere. This is when it was yeah, Matt Sorum was there. Yeah. The lineup. Hang on. Yeah, so this was the um, Eric Dover, the lead vocals, Gilby Clark, you had Mike Inez from Alice in Chains. I like the other guy. Yeah, you're you're a Rod Jackson guy. Yes. I mean, Dover was all right. Where'd Axel go? <laughs> oh, man. I'm in the process of quitting smoking, so all this up close cigarette <laughs> shit. <laughs> so much of it. So fucking tempting, man. It looks so delicious. Love how they got all the booze on uh, Slash's side there. Like you can tell, they've definitely been fucking getting fucked up. I was gonna say he probably asked for like at least three, four bottles of vodka in his rider, just for himself. No uh, sharing. <laughs> it's bad. And they're in a speakeasy right now. How appropriate for Slash. Yeah, this is like a pro. They're playing in the Prohibition era. It's like <laughs> in the nineties, meet the thirties. Like mind blown. <laughs> Yeah, if Slash was around in Prohibition era, they would have strung his ass up. He would have got hung. Well, he would have been screwed. He would have been jailed for all of it. They would have executed Slash. <laughs> and you know something? I hate to say this because I just realized. I didn't think of it before I said it, but I realized Slash is African American. That's yeah. not what I meant, by the way. Yeah. I mean, granted, I, I guess back in the Prohibition era in the 1920s, that probably wouldn't have helped his case. But. That's true. Oh, somebody's taking pictures. You know why? Uh, you know why it's good manners to take your hat off. Why is that? When you come in a house, this is actually interesting to me. Oh, really? it's, a, it's a cultural thing because back in the 20s, when you were at a speakeasy. And uh, you were sitting there drinking when it was illegal to, mm -hmm. and some guy, everybody wore hats, right? And they had hat racks by the door. Mm -hmm. So when you came in, if you didn't take your hat off and hang it on the rack, you weren't going to be there very long. So what was your business that you're walking around talking to people when you're ready to dart? You know what I mean? Like at any mm -hmm. fucking second. When yeah. You, so that's, it would make people uncomfortable. 
because everybody else is sitting here relaxed and here comes some guy now he's walking around he's got his hat on he's not going to be here but a minute why what piece of information does he have you, you know mm -hmm. so it basically though. was like the narcs of the 20s and 30s people were wearing yeah. hats All right, there it is, beggars and hangers on. It has officially been reviewed by your boys at Guns oh, yeah. and Radio. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, so what you want to say? You want to go first? You want me to go first? How you want to do this? I'm gonna let you choose. You. Um, I'll give some like. There's a little bit of like a small little fact tidbit um, from this stuff. Okay. Um. Yes, third song off Five O'Clock Somewhere. There's basically the first single from the album. I think it's probably one of Snake Pit's most famous songs, I say, because this was still covered a lot, especially during that first, the first, even like the second uh, Slash tour when he did oh, yeah. the the tour for his first solo album and then for the first uh, Conspirators album. I mean, it had a music video, so. Yeah, this is probably like his biggest um, track. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so this is written by Slash, Eric Dover, and Duff McKagan, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, this was... I didn't think Duff performed on this song, but... Yeah, so he gets a writing credit here. Um, songs about problems that plague the city of Los Angeles, including drug users and drug dealers. <laughs> Which is um, very interesting. Interesting indeed. First time I ever heard it, Miles Kennedy was singing it, so... Good show that was. Good yeah, show. I was gonna say you can find a lot of the Miles Kennedy versions on YouTube because they did like an acoustic version of this. Oh uh, yeah, Slash and Miles. They did a few um, live ones too. You can find easily. That's the only thing that sucks about them getting rid of all covers in the Slash and Miles Kennedy set is that so many good songs like this never get played anymore. Yeah, especially Sneak Fist stuff because there's some really good material there. I mean, from the couple we've covered so far. I would say there's some really good, solid stuff. Oh, yeah. There's some trash, but there's definitely some really good, uh, really good tunes and uh, mm -hmm. mixed in there. Yeah, but this is actually probably one of the better Snake Pit songs, I think, um, especially from the 5 O'Clock Summer, the first album. Oh, um, yeah. that's <laughs> This is a solid-ass tune. Everything's catchy. It's a good solo. I mean, this is... I think this would have been pretty good as like a Guns N' Roses song, honestly. Maybe reworked it a bit, whatever. Yeah. Like, especially because this was written supposed to be for the next GNR album. This would have been fucking really good, I think. Yeah, a lot of the Snake happened. Pit songs are rejected GNR songs, songs that Axel didn't want to do. Yeah, and I think this one would have been would have been really good for Axel's voice. I think at that time, especially oh, yeah. if he still kept him doing stuff, he was still would have been really good in the mid '90s. I think. Oh yeah. We wouldn't have much to go off of because he was basically just like. Hiding like he was like, like, like a fucking criminal or something for almost ten years. <laughs> he didn't want to put that down. He was afraid somebody make him release some new music. Yeah, literally. 
So yeah, this is actually not a bad song. Um, I'm probably gonna for my rating. Um, you know what? This is something I would definitely, I definitely come back to here and there. Like this is one of the few like Snake Pit songs I would actually go back and listen to frequently, throw it on a playlist. You know, I'll, it wouldn't be one I would skip often. So for me, it's gonna probably be a solid four out of five. I'm gonna give it. Okay. Uh, I'm in a similar boat. It's not one of my favorite tracks by a long shot. I will say this ver this version is a little better than the uh, than the live versions mm -hmm. uh, featuring Miles Kennedy. I I I'll say it's one of the few times where I like the original more than I like Miles singing because I really like Miles Kennedy. Uh, but it's not one of my favorite uh, slash songs. By a long shot. Yeah, because Slash has definitely released much better stuff later on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like and we've reviewed here before, a lot of five star quality stuff. Oh yeah, but um, I mean, I, I I'd say it gets at least a three and a half. I'll put it right there in the middle. All right. All right, but what do you guys think? Leave us a voicemail. Let us know. Hit us up on Discord. Get in any of our social media platforms. Hit us up. Links to all of that is in the description. Hell yeah, man. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok at Guns and Radio Pod. Um, Facebook uh, dot com slash Guns and Radio Pod. And well, speaking of this is a bonus show. We still have um, two other bonus show goals, actually. And we're actually getting pretty close to those ones. So we may get some more bonus stuff coming up in the near future, it looks like. Who knows? Who knows, man? Um, so if you head over to our Facebook, uh, get us to 150 followers. I just checked before we went on air doing this. We're two away from that one. So that oh, one's uh, very close. So hit that like, hit the follow button over on our Facebook page. And while you're at it, go over to our Twitter at Guns and Radio Pod. And once you get us to 250 followers over there, uh, we'll put up a poll there for another bonus show. And we're about 10 away on our Twitter as well. So Nice. So we're very close to two bonus show goals. Some more songs uh, to, for us to get out of the wheel and review, or possibly even a concert watch along, um, depending on what you guys want from us as well. We may even do something like that where we put it in your hands and we just pick at random. I'll make you a deal. This is airing August 5th. If we hit these two bonus show goals by August... 12th then we'll just take the two songs that tied in the poll and we'll bring you both of those two in ah, a week. hell yeah more we'll make a whole snake pit week a whole slash week go. since the summer of slash is still ongoing that's right uh speaking of the summer of slash i wanted to get your opinion on something i know we said we was gonna listen to crossroads this week on shotcast <laughs> saturday but i wanted to appeal to you to change our decision and move crossroads to next week all right, what do you have in mind, though? I want to listen to the new Slash and Miles Kennedy song that just came out this week, their cover of Rocket Man. All right, I'm down for that, because that I know I haven't listened to yet. And this will be a first-time listen for Shotcast. That'll be actually make some really good Summer of Slash content. Yeah, since so we're at the Summer of Slash, there's a new Slash song uh, recently dropped. We'll go ahead and review it right here on the Shotcast. Yeah, so we'll see you guys in two days on Saturday for that one. That's right. And until then, I'm Dustin Bones. And I'm Chris Caputo. Join us Saturday. The Summer Slash is rolling on. And come back here next Monday for another edition of Guns and Radio. Peace. And thank you. Yes, that too. <laughs>